Okay, so we've done a basic template. We've showed the output of the basic template. I'm now going to show you a more advanced template uh, because I think it's just easier for me to walk you through something that I use an existing template on a day to day basis. Plus, I actually just recorded a video this morning using the same template so you can actually see what's outputted and how this kind of saves you some time and why it's worth spending that extra time getting the template right can speed up your whole production flow. If you're a person who's very scared of technology or you're scared of breaking something or you want some kind of level of consistency to your technology on a day-to-day -day basis, then templates are the way to go with ScreenFlow, especially if you want to make a video update every day or every week. Um, I'm going to step through this line by line, layer by layer, so you can see what's going on. But basically what I've got on the top layer is the borders. So the top red border, left, right, bottom, they're all on one on one layer and they're all nestled together. So you can see here they're all nestled together. I've given them a name just to make it easier to see them. This one's the left one. I can turn that off and you can see it disappears. So I have that as a nested object. It just plays along for five seconds and then at the end of it you'll see that there's an end transition where it fades out and that just disappears. Now remember these layers are all timed as well. So things are happening at a certain speed right so it's it's about getting those layers all together and understanding that so first of all I've got the borders the borders are on the very top layer and then underneath that I've got intro logo and text so if I click through to that again that's a nested object again and so it's the logo it's some text and then there's an annotation on the bottom that you can't see because it's on a black screen but if we go back to the timeline you can see that I've got a little transparent background around the text just so that it doesn't blur into the background I could turn that off and you can see that without it but um, oh, it's still there hang on what did I do did I do it wrong yeah I didn't turn it off go back interesting it's not turning it off so let me just delete it so you can see that it's not there there you go that's without it I'm not sure why it does that in the nested objects maybe it forgets it when you go into the nested object um, so yeah, I have the text and the logo on each one. And that's another layer that goes underneath that. And then this is where it gets really interesting. And I found this out from trial and error. And I was playing around with it just to see if I could do it. Uh, for the first two seconds here, for the, the microphone uh, placeholder, for the, for the camera and microphone, microphone placeholder, what I wanted to do is I wanted to move the placeholder, so the camera placeholder, I wanted it to move just to the right. Now, my face is not always here, but what I can do is once I've gone through the template recorded, I can actually move that afterwards, and I'll show you that in a minute. But what this does is it moves across, and then at two seconds, I move it back again. Now, I had a problem with timings, and it does weird stuff if you have these on the same layer. So what I did is I split it at two seconds, and then from two seconds onwards, I move it back in and I'm using a little action effect there to be able to like move it across you can change those speed wise etc um, one thing that I did make a mistake of is is when I cut it before it uh, got all out of sync because I I not put it forward two seconds so it's a good idea to kind of copy play around with this because this can be a little bit weird if you don't have this as a copy of this one and then minus two seconds then you end up with like audio sync issues so that's something to be super mindful of but it doesn't matter what length this is now it'll just run through because that's the placeholder and then what I did is I extracted the audio from this because I, I thought I had issues with the audio so it just ran all the time perfectly and then I've also got a, um, I think I've got it on here, I'll have a look, I'm not sure if I have or not. I should have audio filter, yeah I've got re remove background noise on this actual audio clip as well. And then underneath that I have the moving background, so you can see that kind of moving background. That was just something that I found royalty free on YouTube that I could use. So you could change that out every time if you wanted to. And then under that, um, what is this? I think this is the background I think this is the background shot yeah I think that's the background so fairly simple template but it just speeds up the intros and outros on on videos I think at the very end of here as well if I shrink it all the way down I've got a little outro here as well 
which is my little outro, which at the end of it. It's all self-contained, so the audio's inside of that. And then what that does is this is a recording that I did this morning. So if I extend this out, you can see how this works in practice. So all I did after this finished is I scrolled along here to see if I was on screen or not. And if I'm not, I can just click on that layer and I can move that to wherever I want it to be. If I wanted to have it in more like that, then it will just move a small amount. Also, while I'm at this stage, I take my thumbnail. So I can just use Cloud App and just grab it. So I don't have to make a separate thumbnail up. I can just grab it like that and that uploads it to the cloud. So then all I, I do is go in here. I change my text that I want on the on the slideshow on the slide sorry um, and then you can see how this all works so it moves across I take my my screen uh, capture here for my image for my thumbnail and then what happens is it gets to here and you actually see two of me because of this line but if I just cursor forward a little bit then it disappears when you're actually playing it you don't see it you could polish that up a little bit but you, you don't actually see it because it jumps onto the next scene so it just moves it back in. And if we want to, we can make that a bit more snappy. Just woof, comes back in. You can even change the curve types on these if you want. If you just want to have this kind of linear to come back in as, a, as a, just a little push. Boom, like that. And then you'll notice at the top here at four seconds, as I'm starting to get into the video, the bars start to disappear. And then we just go straight into the video. And then you can see here, this is where the audio has been improved. I'm not sure if there's audio filters on this. I think I only put the remove background noise on this. I actually need to uh, play around with this uh, template. It's one thing that you'll end up doing is work going back to the template to add certain things in. So you might want to put in a um, the audio filters on, on this layer, for instance. So that's kind of how it comes out. And it speeds up production something like crazy. Because all I need to do now is move my outro on the end, cut you know cut and, and tail it top and tail it if you want to call it that just make sure that uh, you could go through and, and take all the ums and ahs out but I kind of just like free freestyle it and go all the way through um, but that's just a really quick way of making advanced themes with audio effects gen locking already done bear in mind when I when I have this in this template let me go back to this template for the camera microphone if I go to video you'll see that for the video filters I already have my chroma key already set up so I don't have to do any of that like once I get through to this file the recording the green screens done the audio's done I just have to type on my text effects my text for the thumbnail and then move the end outro in place and, and it takes literally minutes to do I uh, thought I'd share that with you. I'm sure you can make even more advanced templ templates than that. Maybe timed templates. You could have like running for five minutes, then a notification on screen, or you just know that a new graphic's going to come on screen. Um, you could share that template with a remote worker in Dropbox, or just drop your files into it, and they can put it inside of the uh, ScreenFlow template. Really powerful tool. I think it's one of the most glossed over areas of this app, and really you shouldn't be sleeping on it all right 